All right, today we are going to be hitting up our screen flows. And in a couple of the videos that we've already done, you've seen me use the screen flow before for different elements. Uh, but today I want to focus in on specifically the screen component. We'll obviously hook this up and do a revision for you on one that we uh, touched on earlier. But I will get into this actual screen flow. And what I want to do is kind of go over what's all available here and how you can actually build out a specific screen how that works, what it looks like, what the purpose of it is. Um, so we're gonna get into that. And as a bonus here, I have this sunlight coming in, getting right in my face. So you got that nice beauty skin in this video. So that's an added perk for you. Um, but before we jump into this actual full on video, what I wanna hurry and touch on, just in case you're new to this, um, everything that I post is gonna be here on my blog site. And we have anything from podcasts, to uh, Salesforce tips like we're going over today, business applications like Zapier and Slack and DocuSign. Uh, I also try to post um, you know, once every week, every other week, some thoughts around things that are just helping me in my own career, things that I'm doing outside of Salesforce stuff, just like as like trying to progress myself. Uh, so if that's interesting to you as well, feel free to check that out. Um, so best part about all this though, is that I will have like a, a documentation for each one of these videos. So you can always jump into here and just specifically like look at the written word along with screenshots. If if you learn better that way, feel free to do it that way versus watching this entire video and kind of parsing through it. Um, so if that's you, feel free to jump over there right now. Otherwise, we're gonna go ahead and get through this video with you guys. Okay, uh, so I wanna try to sum these videos down a little bit. I think they're getting a little bit too long, so we're just gonna kinda jump right into this. We got our flow pulled up. If you don't know anything about a flow, what we're looking at right here, this, this blank space is called your canvas. Over here, you have these things called elements, and one of those elements is a screen. How you put the screen onto your canvas is you just drag it, and then it will pop up and say, what do you wanna put on this screen? Obviously, we already have one here, um, and so we're gonna dive into exactly what this whole thing is about, okay? So the reason you want to use a screen flow, I guess let's, let's touch that first. The reason that you want to use a screen flow is in the use case where you want to update something automatically, but you need to have information given to you by the user. So oftentimes we sh we've shown something in the past videos, right, that's called an auto launch flow, which is basically, oh, somebody made this change. Now we're gonna automatically push this flow to start running. It's gonna start running in the background and nobody knows about it, right? It's just like a hands-off experience. It just makes this update and we're done with it. In this use case, it's kind of like a hybrid of that because we're still doing something in the background, we're still updating something, but the kicker to all of that is that uh, we do require information from the user and for that reason, we need to have a screen that's going to pop up for them so that they can input information for us, right? So that's what that's all about. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what this use case is going to be, okay? So we have our screen flow set up, it's ready to go. And how this one specifically is going to work is exactly like what I just explained. I want to update the favorite music or their favorite genre of music but in order to do that, right, I need to know what the user's favorite genre of music actually is. Like I can't just go in there and update this field to whatever because I'm not gonna know what their favorite music genre is, right? Like I need their input um, put into the screen and the flow so that it can use that information to update the actual record for me. Um, if you're brand new to these videos and this is your very first one watching, I'm aware that there are several different ways that we can update this, right? Like I could update it here and just have them update it like within the record itself and not have to use the flow. Um, but what the main purpose of this video is, is to show people a rough idea at a basic level, how these things work, right? Like I wanna show you how the flow works and I wanna give you an example that's easy to understand. Um, so like I said, I understand there's probably other ways that we could do this, but we're gonna go ahead and use a flow for it, okay? So we have this button we click it, up pops our screen. This is the screen part that the user sees, right? It has some text here that we can see. And then what I can do is I can update this, right? If I wanna update it to wrap instead um, and hit next, it'll go ahead and update this field to wrap, 
So once again, just a recap, we want the user's input in order to make the update. We don't know how to update it if we don't have the user's input. That's your basic idea of what a screen flow should be. So now you have an understanding, you see the button, we click the button, a screen pops up, they enter that information. So that's how that's going to work for you, okay? Now, jumping back over to our actual flow, now uh, let's just go ahead and jump into this one first and then we'll, we'll hook all this stuff up, okay? So our actual screen when we pull this over, um, what it allows us to do is, is quite a bit of things, right? There's 35 other things over here that we can do, right? And you can kind of, like you just saw, collapse these, expand them, and see what's available for you to input. And it's just like the canvas itself. If I wanted to put an address, boom, there's an address, right? If I want to put an email, boom, there's an email. If I want to put a phone, there's a phone, right? So you literally just find what you're looking for, what you want to pop up on this screen, and you drag it over to this right-hand side, okay? And once you've dragged it over, then up we'll pop these things like our API name, the label, what we want it to do, all that kind of stuff, like associated with the actual component. Um, so let's delete these ones because we don't need any of this. We only need them to make this simple update. So what I've done here is if you hover over them as well, you can see exactly what it is. So I have display text here, and the display text is just text that's going to pop up. You can make it a little more fun this way. Um, add in whatever you want. Obviously, it's not going to be editable. It's just something that pops up letting them know what's going on. So I always like to include this. Maybe I wouldn't have to, right? Like if I want to be a little more to the point, this does say favorite music genre. They would get the idea of what's going on um, and they could fill that out. But either way, right? Like I wanted to fill it out. I wanted to put it in there to make it a little more obvious for what it is that they're doing. So you have all these components on the left-hand side. And you can essentially pick one of these. And if you guys want to see like a video on something specific that's maybe confusing to you, feel free to comment in the section below on this video and, and let me know and we can cover that. I'm not gonna get into like all these, obviously there's 35 of them, uh, but you get the idea, right? Is we have this screen that pops up, we need the user to put information in for us. So what is it that I need to supply here? Well, in my case, you know, I have a, an open text field on my opportunity that allows the user to input their favorite music genre. So what am I going to do here? Well, I'm gonna search for my text. I'm going to grab my text, I dragged it over. And now that I have it dragged over, I've named it what I want it to be. So when this pops up for the user, as we saw here, right? When this pops up, we want it to say this. This is our label, right? Because this is telling them what it is that they're updating. So we have our label set up to say favorite uh, music genre. And then our API name will auto populate to that. Now I could require this if I needed it, which I probably should since it's the only field here. So let's leave that. And then here's where something cool will happen. It does give you the option to go ahead and add a default value. When we get to those uh, other elements on our canvas right now, I will show you how I got that. Um, but essentially what I'm doing is I'm going to the opportunity and I'm saying, look, if you've already filled this out, I want to pull that information off of the opportunity record and input it here as a default value. And how you see that, right, is I now have wrap right here. So if I click this button, that runs and it inputs wrap for me. And the reason that I like to do that in a lot of these screen flows is for the reason of if they've already updated it, or if you have several fields that you're wanting them to update, it's usually a good idea for them to know, hey, you've already updated this, this is what the value is, um, just in case they don't wanna update it at all. You know, Just in case rap is actually their favorite music genre still, then they'll just be like, oh, actually, I don't need to update this, right? So they get a good understanding and it's not blank, doesn't show up blank for them to say, hey, we don't know what it is, and then they update it to the same thing that it already is. That's a waste of time for everybody, right? So it's a good idea um, in a lot of use cases to be able to auto-populate that as the default value. So that's what we've done here. We're pulling in that information that they've already put on the opportunity, and we're going to default that value. Um, something else you can do within these components, as you're seeing, um, on my text one, I can also set uh, component visibility. Now, component visibility would mean, you know, hey, we only want this to show up if another field is selected. 
or we only want it to show up if this information is there. So this allows you to create almost like an if statement, right? Which is if they do this or if this is available, then allow this information to pop up. A quick example of something like that would be, you know, like a checkbox. Let's say we grab a checkbox, we throw this bad boy over here, and we say on this one, yeah, we only want this to be available. We can say this, see, if I move it to and, I could say, uh, we only want it to be available if favorite music genre um, is null, we'll say false. So what that now says, right, is we want this checkbox to pop up as long as this one is not blank. That's what that reads as. So if they fill this information out, then we want this to appear, right? So you can set these different visibility components um, to allow different things to pop up when they're filling this stuff out. And in some use cases, I've done that where, you know, maybe you don't really need information unless they're going to fill out a field prior to it. So maybe I don't need this checkbox unless they're going to fill this out. So when I have it pop up after they fill this out, it's almost like an indicator to that user to be like, oh, this thing's popping up now that I'm done filling this out. This must also be required or I must also have to fill out some information here, right? So you can do that. You can set this visibility, which is awesome, um, to be able to kind of create a better user experience there. Uh, the next piece down is uh, just your validation rules. So hopefully you're familiar with that if you're working on flows at this point, but the validate input works just like a validation rule. So you can set things up to say, you know, maybe we don't want them to actually input wrap. Um, we could create a validation rule to say, hey, if they insert the letters RAP together, we don't want them to actually insert that. Right. So you can create these different validation rules to ensure that the proper information is being filled out uh, within that component. Um, help is just your help text. Um, the help text here, just like you would do on a regular field when you create it, is how this thing works. Right. So we could enter in, hey, this favorite music genre actually is going to um, take your input. I mean, this one's pretty straightforward, but you would just say something like that. Right. Like, this is your favorite music genre. You know, this field is going to capture that, fill it out accordingly, whatever it is like that. So that way, if there is some confusion or maybe some hesitancy of like what your field is, what you're trying to capture, you can always insert the help text here, just like you would when you create a field within Salesforce. So those are kind of your main ideas here uh, of what you can see um, within the components itself. Now up here, you have your little header. Okay, so your header is like letting us know basically what's going on with this. You can take these things away, you can um, add them there so that it has this little header up top. You can take away the footer um, or you can leave the footer there. Um, but the main point on this page, I would say, is a best practice that I believe Salesforce pushes for is that you try to make all your updates all at once um, towards the end of your flow for like, limitation reasons. Um, and part of that would be, you know, making sure that you don't provide these extra buttons if you don't need it, right? So it's like, in this case, I only have this one field. So why would I, why would I keep this previous button? What's the previous button going to do, right? And actually, I don't even think it'll pop up since I only have one screen. But it's, it's that mentality, right? A best practice, best habit of, do I need this previous button? Do I need this pause button? Do I need X, Y, and Z, right? So this allows you to control how the user is going to move through the screen flow. And in this case, like I said, we only have the one screen, so I really only need to make sure that I have next or finish. And it's always gonna populate as finish because I only have this one screen for them to actually go through. Um, if we have several screens hooked up, obviously it'll allow me to uh, display next there instead. And that does it automatically for you. So. Kind of keep in mind your control navigation and how you want that user to move through your flow um, because that is important. Um, same idea, you can also provide help text of like what it is that the screen is doing and uh, provide more information about it if you need to do that. Um, so that's kind of like our gist of everything on here. Each one is going to be a little bit different as you're seeing that I click into, right? Because they may 
need different things applied to it. So that's like why I said, you know, obviously there's 35 things on here. I'm not going to go through every single one. Um, so if there's one specific that you guys want me to review, I can do that. Um, but basically, you know, you add these different things on here, they're going to have different things that we're going to need to input um, so that the user has all the information that they need. Also, so that the system has all the information that it needs to be able to make those proper updates, okay? So now that we have our screen flow, uh, let's remove this little guy because we don't need him. We'll hit done and we're gonna hook this up. Now, I didn't wanna spend a ton of time on this part just because you know that's not what this video is about. It's about this screen and basically how you set that screen up. Um, but what we're doing, right, is we're, we're having a couple different elements run. We have our get records here and that's how we're grabbing our favorite music genre. Um, so we're going into the opportunity record. When they click on this button, go ahead and capture our record ID when they click the button and then match it up with the ID once we've done that, we want to grab the favorite music genre. And then that way we can use that information to uh, set it up as a default value on our, sorry, on our screen, which is what we've done. So we have our get records. It goes and gets that favorite music genre. As you saw here, I can then auto populate that favorite music genre into our default value. Um, we have our screen set up after they hit finish there. Obviously, what do we want to do? Well, we want to go and update that opportunity, right? We have the information from the user now. We have the information that was available. It's the only update that's happening here. So afterwards, after they fill out that info, go ahead and update that same opportunity ID that we started with. And what we want to do is we want to go to the opportunity. We want to update this field with our screen component favorite music genre. So the last part I'll point out is when you use screens, right? If you have a lot of variables, ours doesn't, but if you have a lot of variables, sometimes you might get confused and you grab something else. Maybe it's just like a different variable that actually didn't get updated. So when you grab what one you're updating, well, the whole point of us populating that screen component was so that they could input information. So you wanna make sure that we're grabbing the value that they just updated and using that as the actual update, right? Because if I don't, what was the point of having them do a screen flow? There wasn't one, right? In order to grab that information, it'll be under the header screen component, and that's the one we wanna grab, right? And as you saw there, I mean, this one's already set up, I don't need to save. Um, so I'll click on this button, our get uh, records element will run, it finds that wrap was already populated, I can update this to country, hit next and boom, it updates it to country. So that's a basic way that your screen flow will work.